Hi and welcome to another video, part of the series where we're building an e-commerce website with Django and React. All you need to do to follow along is just go to the Django React e-commerce GitHub repository. The link is in the description of this video. Once you've cloned or downloaded this, then we can get started. Alright, so here I have the application running on my local host port 3000. This is because you need the React server running and you need the Django server running. And in development, we're just keeping them separate. Then in production, we'll run the build command to pull all of the React files into the Django static files and then host it on the Django server. But for now, we have it open here on the local host 3000. This is what it looks like. We can go to products and I don't have any products right now because it's just a fresh database. So I'm going to go into the admin and let's just put an extra slash on the end there and let's zoom in a little bit here. We're going to need to create a super user as well. So we'll just say create super user and I'll just say admin and we can run the server again. Cool. Then we can log in with admin and here we go. So what I'm going to do is just go into items. And I'm just going to add an item in here. Cool. So now I've got my shirt there. And we can just come and refresh here. And okay, that image isn't loading. So what I'm going to do is just come back in here. And we're going to go to our home. And then we're going to go into URLs. And we're going to just come here to the top. We're just going to import the settings module. Just so that we can have some more configuration for the URLs. Depending on whether we're in debug mode or not. So I'll say from Django.conf import settings, then we can come all the way down here and we can say if settings.debug, then I'm going to add and we're going to need to say plus equals to, and then here we're going to need to import the static command and that's going to be from Django.conf.urls.static and we'll just say import static. And then here we can just add in static, which takes in basically this here. So I'm just going to copy that and we'll just paste it in here. And that's exactly what we need because if we go into the settings base and just come all the way down, then here we have the media root and we have the media URL, which is exactly what we're putting in here. And I'm going to come and cut that out as well. And I'll say if not settings.debug then I'll say URL patterns plus equals to and this is just going to be inside a list because we're adding those elements together so I'm just going to cut that out paste that in there and save it like this so now we won't get this issue unless we're in production so now if we come back and refresh this there we go so there's the shirt showing up and now what we want to do is handle the logic of displaying a count of the number of items in our cart, which we'll do here in the top right of the navigation bar and handle adding to cart. Now, in order to do this, we're going to require you to be logged in. And yes, there are ways that you could store the information in local storage or in some sort of index DB in the browser. And that way you don't need it to actually be logged in before you can add something to cart, which is one way of doing it, but we're just going to stick to ensuring the user is authenticated to handle that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is first go and log in. So just log in with my admin user, go back to products here, and we're going to link this up to an API view and basically convert the view that we had from the e-commerce project into an API view. So what I'm going to do is just close this and we can go into our core app. Then here we can open up views. And here we have a long list of views. And I'm also going to open up the URLs and we'll just look here for the add to cart view, which is this one here. So add to cart with the slug as well. And we'll go into views, and basically just search for that add to cart view. So we'll just search and there it is. And basically I'm going to copy all of that. We're going to go here into API into views. I'm going to paste this all here and then we're just going to convert this into an API view and I'm going to handle this by using the generic API view. So 
not a detail view or any of the other generics. I'm just going to use a view from REST framework dot views. And that is the API view. So I'm going to do a little bit of a custom way of doing this. So we'll just take that and then here we'll create a class and we'll say that this is add to cart view, which is going to inherit from the API view. And here this is going to be a post method that we will accept because a get method can't contain any data unless you're passing it into the query parameters. So post makes a little bit more sense here. So I'm going to say this takes in self request args and keyword args. And we need to make sure that the request data is passing in a slug. So this way we can then continue with all of this logic because it all starts with getting the item via that slug. So all of this we can basically just pass here inside the post method. So I'm just going to tab it all in just like this. And what we'll need to change is the redirects here because we're not returning a redirect. We now need to return a response from the Django REST framework. So we'll come in here and we'll say from REST framework dot response import response. And I'll also say from REST framework dot status. And we're going to import some statuses here. So we could do HTTP 201 or 200. So we'll just do 200 and we'll do the 400 as well. So for bad request. And basically, depending on how successful this method goes, we can return either one of these responses or all those statuses. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that the slug equals to request dot data dot get the slug or none. And then we'll say if not slug or rather if slug is none, then we're going to return a response that has an HTTP 400 status. So we'll say return response. And then here we'll pass in a message. And we can just say invalid request. And then we'll say that the status equals to an HTTP 400. So otherwise, if there is a slug, then we'll continue with all of this. And all of this is exactly the same. So we're, we've got an order query set, filter it, check if it exists, and then all the way down here, messages.info is also not going to be necessary because the message won't display if this is an API. So we'd need another way of handling messages. So I'm going to comment those out. And then the redirect, again, we're going to need to return a response instead. So this will be response, and we'll just say status is HTTP 200. Then we can copy that and I'm going to get rid of all of those and just replace them with the status here. Cool. And basically what we would need to do on the front end is when we are returned an HTTP 200, then we would display our own message component. So I'm actually going to delete those comments as well. And like this, we've basically converted it into an API view. So I'm going to take that and we can start importing them over here. So import add to cart view and we can then say this will be add to cart and it doesn't take any parameters because we're passing it in the request data and then we can just pass this as the name as well. So add to cart and then just put a comma at the end here. Cool. So now if we go to API slash add to cart, then we will add that item to cart and just need to make sure we pass in the slug. So we can minimize this, go into source and go to containers, product list, and we can keep this open. And then here, I'm just going to close URLs core and we're going to need to create an add to cart URL inside our constants as well. So let's just go in there and we can copy this and we'll call this one the add to cart URL and it's going to go straight to add to cart. So we'll just copy this paste that there then we can copy this and bring it into this file just like that and then when we click on that add to cart button which is here we'll add an event so we'll say on click equals to and we'll say this dot handle 
add to cart. And I'm also going to make this an anonymous function like this and make sure that we pass in the slug. So that's going to be item dot slug, which we're passing into this method. And then here we can just come above and we'll say handle add to cart, which takes a slug. And then we can say this dot set state and might as well actually just copy everything in the component did mount paste that here and then instead of using a get method we're going to use a post method and this is going to be the add to cart url and we need to pass in the slug as our data that's going into this post request and then here we'll console log that out as well but instead of setting the data like that i'm just going to get rid of that and here is where we would need to update the cart count cool so like this let's just inspect here and we can bring up the console and we'll just do this so right now there's our array and we can see slug there as part of the object so if i clear this click there and let's see so we're getting a status 500 so let's just bring this up here and we're getting okay get object or four four is not defined so that's fine you can just come up top here and i'm just going to go grab some of the imports we have here so most of those there and then we'll just come up top and paste those here so get object or 404 we don't need those object does not exist we aren't using right now but i'll keep it there messages and then settings we aren't using as well but i'll keep it there as well cool so let's just check if we're using any other methods and doesn't look like it so let's come back here and we can just refresh this add to cart come back and so now we're getting order item is not defined okay so we need to import this from core up models and order as well and let's see okay Let's come back and refresh this add to cart and so let's see this one now this is the anonymous user yeah so now we need to make sure that we are posting our authorization token inside here so here what i'm going to do is say axios dot defaults dot headers equals to this object and then here we'll specify the authorization header and this will just be token and then inside there we're going to need to pass in the token which if we just close that and come down here so product list is not being connected like our layout would be because here we're using connect and passing in authenticated there so what i'm going to do instead of passing this in and calling access.defaults.headers every time what i'm going to do is create an axios instance and then we can import that instance and use that to create authenticated requests. So what I'm going to do here inside the source is create another file and we'll call it utils.js. Here I'll import Axios from Axios. And then here I'm just going to say export constant auth Axios, which is basically going to call axios.create. And then inside here, we just pass in some configuration options. And the base URL is basically the most important property of this object, which is, in our case, the API endpoint in our constants. So this endpoint here. Basically, anything we send to this URL that includes up until slash API, we're just going to assume needs to be authenticated for. So we can import this endpoint and what i'll do is just put export constant there then we can copy this and come in here and we'll say import endpoint from and this will be from constants so we'll set the base url as that endpoint then we need to set the headers and that's going to contain an authorization header which is going to be a string and here i'll just say token and then we'll grab our token from the local storage so this can just be local storage dot get item 
and we're getting the token. So now this auth axis we can import and then we don't need to do any of that every time and instead we just call auth axis.get. So here we'll say import auth axis from and this is going to be from our utils. Okay. And let's see, so auth axis, we won't need to do for product list. So I'm just going to leave that as axis, but for add to cart, we will need to be authenticated. So that's going to be auth axis there. And then if we come back and click add to cart, let's see, we're not getting time zone. Okay. So we'll come in here and let's just make sure that we import it the same way. So from Django.utils, so we'll come in here, there we go. Cool. Let's refresh the page, add to cart. And we had a little bit of a loader display there. So that seemed to work. If we come back here, line 43 is where we were returning the data and we didn't get any data returned to us because all we were doing is returning a response. So we weren't returning any specific data here in these HTTP 200s and that's fine. So, what we can do is now just work on displaying that item count over here. And the way we're going to do this is by storing it in the store. So in our React Redux store. So let's just come back here and we can close a bit of these. So here inside the store, we have actions and we have reduces. So what I'm going to do is just go here into auth. And here you can see all of these actions here. So what I'll do is create another file here and we'll call this cart.js. And very similarly to this structure, we're going to have some methods that update the cart or that tell the cart to fetch the count. So what I'm going to do is just copy all of this, paste it here. And I'll also import auth axis. So just like that. And then here we can call this cart start, cart success, cart fail. And then in action types, we'll just copy these and we can say the exact same thing. And then just make sure that these are labeled correctly. Cool. So then we can come in here and instead of importing them like that, I'll import them all like this. So we will call the cart start there and then cart success and cart fail. And obviously we don't have cart logout. So I'm going to go and get rid of that. Then here, I'm just going to call this data and I'm going to console.log data there as well, because we don't really know what we're getting right now. Then if we just take a look at auth, we're going to scroll down here. So here, this auth login, we're going to mimic this structure. And this is basically just going to be called like our cart fetch. And all we need to do is just get rid of those parameters there. We'll dispatch the cart start, then I'll get rid of that data there. And instead of calling axios, this is going to be auth axios. This URL we can specify in our constants. So if we go to constants, we could call this export constant. This will be fetch cart count or rather fetch cart. And it's going to basically be this. And we can say this is fetch cart. Then we can take that and make sure we paste it here. And then we'll import it from our constants. So import fetch cart from the constants. Then here, I'm not going to set anything in local storage. So we can get rid of all of this. And this will be cart success, which will take the data. So this will pass response.data and get rid of that one. And this will be cart fail. Okay. So cart fetch is what we want to call basically when the application is loaded. So for the first time we will fetch whatever's in the cart. 
and then going forward every time we add to cart we can call cart fetch as well so then here I'm going to copy that auth and we'll just call this cart as well in the reducers the initial state this is going to just be our cart which will be null for the time being then we have error and we have loading and our action types we're going to make the same as from here so we can just copy that get rid of all of this and then this will be cart start cart success cart fail then we can get rid of the logout and we can get rid of this case here as well so for cart start we will call cart start and then for cart success we'll call cart success and for cart fail we will call cart fail and then just make sure we get rid of the action types as well okay so now we're using everything there and we can now go into index and I'm going to import the cart reducer from our store and this will be reducers slash cart then we can take this and we can call cart the cart reducer cool so we can close this we'll then want to go into the layout because we want to display the cart item count here in the layout so we already have the connect imported so basically here what I'm going to do is say cart is state dot cart dot and we should actually call this maybe something slightly different so this could be our shopping cart like this and then here in the cart success we won't be getting token instead we'll be getting data so shopping cart will be the action data that's coming from the action that way in our layout we can access it like this and then we can come over here and right here in the render method we're already passing authenticated so I'll bring cart in there and we can just console log the cart over there cool so now we need to actually have a URL that mimics the URL that's sent over here in this method so fetch cart so if we come back here into views what we want to do is fetch our actual cart here so if we come back here in the views we basically want to have a method that's a get method which will return us our cart and that's basically our order essentially so what we can do is we can create an order serializer which will return all of the information in our order so we'll just come over here and actually just copy that there and make sure we import the order then we can paste this here we can use the order model and we can just open up models as well and take a look here at the order so the things that we would want to display in our order would be the items and basically how many items we have so that means that our serializer needs to serialize the order item as well because that has more information and we'll need to pass in the length of the order items that's this many to many field so here we can basically get rid of all of this here and then we can just pass in the items and the items is going to be a serializer method and we can actually call this the order items so pass it in like this and then we will create a method which we'll call get order items and here we'll need to create a new serializer so this one is the order serializer so we can just copy this one paste this and this is the order item serializer which will need the order item so we can bring that there order item and then here this will use the order item and if we take a look at the order item this references the item itself and the quantity so what I'm going to do is specify ID and then we'll have item and then we will have quantity and then the item is going to need to be a reference to this item but instead of doing it as another serializer of this entire information here I'm just going to basically 
provide the string value of the item. So basically calling the get string method on the class. So we can just come here to the top. We can create a class called the string serializer. And this is going to reference serializers dot string related field. And then we can say define to internal value. And this just takes in self and value. And then we can just say return value like that. Then we can use this. And the item here will just be a string representation of it. And then we can get rid of that there as well. So now we have the quantity and we have the name and we have the ID, which is good. Then we can take this and here we will use the serializer to serialize the order items that belong to this order. So we will return that and then inside that serializer, I'm going to return object dot items dot all and then set many equal to true and make sure we return the data that comes from this serialization. So now we have the order being serialized and that we can bring here into our view. So we can say from dot serializers import order serializer. And here we'll say this is a class and this will just be our order detail view, which will just be a detail view actually. So we can just come here and we'll import the retrieve API view and then come over here and retrieve API view. Then here we'll say that the serializer class equals the order serializer. The permissions classes is that we have to be authenticated. So here from dot permissions, we're going to say is authenticated and make sure we pass that in over here. And then the query set, we're actually going to manipulate here because we need to make sure we pass in the correct order. So this is going to be get query set, which takes in self. And in here, we're basically going to copy what the order detail view does. So if we take a look at the URLs and look for basically the order summary view. So let's go back in there and search for order summary view then we want this. So this order here, we can copy that. And actually, we can copy all of that there. And we can come in here. So we're going to try get the order that relates to the user, and that has not been ordered yet. And then we can get rid of that. And actually, this isn't get query set, this is get object because we're returning one instance. Then we don't need return render, we can just say return the order. So just get rid of that. And if the object does not exist, then we will need to return a response. So we can just cut all of that out. And we'll say that the message is this response like that. And then we can get rid of this and say return response where that is the message. And we'll say that the status is a 400. Cool. So now we can take this, come into URLs, paste this here, and then we just need to get that URL. So let's go back here into the constants. And this was fetch cart, which we'll later see is basically the same as the order summary view. So this I'll just call order summary URL. And here we'll just change this to order summary. So we can take this, make sure that we are bringing that into this URL as, as well. So in here, okay, then here in our views, we're going to take this and make sure that this is the right URL as well. So this part here, slash order summary. So we'll just create another path that goes to order summary. And it's going to use the order detail view. And we'll say dot as view. And then we can say name is order summary. Okay, so now we have that we have that correctly set up as well. And so now we have 
the Django server working fine. So then here in reduces cart, it says it can't resolve dot slash action types, which is fine. We can just go one back and into actions like that. Now here in the layout, we would basically want to not only grab the cart here, but we also want to pass a method which will fetch the cart. So if we go back to here, this cart fetch, we're going to bring this here. So just call this as an anonymous function, which will dispatch cart fetch. And we should actually call that fetch cart, seeing as that's better English. So fetch cart like this and there as well. Then here we will import this from the top. So that will be this that comes from cart and this will be fetch cart. There we go. Then fetch cart is what we all want to do in the component did mount method of this component so that we can actually grab that data every time the layout is rendered. So component did mount here we will call this dot props dot fetch cart. And if we bring this up, so now we're getting a 405. So let's just come back here and see we're getting post. This needs to be a get. And if we come back here, now we have layout.js25, which is in here. So cart is originally undefined. And in cart.js line 13, we're actually getting the ID as one. Then we have order items. And we have this item is part of the order. So we have one item in the cart. So if we just come back here and go to cart line 13, which is here, then what I'm going to do is pass in the data just into this object like that. Then we can close this. And inside here in the cart success is where we will basically set the shopping cart to be action.data. So it will go from null into that object. And that way here, line 25, you can see now that's being pre-populated with all of this information there. So what we can do then is here inside this menu container, we can try and add another section of it, which goes here on the right hand side. So if we just search for semantic UI react and we can go to layouts and then here, what I'm going to do is just look here for one of these examples. So like this sticky, if we check this out, you can see this is on the right hand side. So if we just click on source and we just come down, then we can scroll down and check here is the menu. So inside the container, they have menu with a position as right. So I'm going to copy that and then come back in here. And this menu is there. So what I'm going to do is paste that one there. And I'll also make sure that this one is inverted. So if we paste that and come back here, let's just see here, it says that's not coming out correctly. So I'm just going to get rid of the dot menu. And that's also not right. So let's just undo that bring this out there and we can take this come inside the container and I'll paste that there and there we go cool so there's the drop down and basically what we want is the cart item count to be displaying there and then when you click this it will bring up the drop down with a little bit of an order summary there already so what I'm going to do is just close that and come back here then the text here as drop down. This we will basically output dynamically, and that's going to come from our cart. So we can say text, and we can say this outputted value there is going to be cart dot. And if we just refresh here, so order items come back. So cart dot order items dot length and I'll just say items then if we come back here we're getting order items of null so then if we just come all the way down here what I'm going to do is grab loading from state dot cart 
which is state.cart.loading. And then this we can grab here as a prop, just place it there. And then we can actually output a loader. So if we just take a look, we're using the drop down component. And if we look at the drop down component, then here we should have the option for loading. So like this. So if you just look at try it, then loading is just a prop that we add in the drop down. So here in this drop down, we can say loading equals loading like that. And then here I'll just say cart not equal to null. Then we'll output that. Otherwise, I'll just say zero for now. And now we have one item there. And if we take a look here at the drop down as well, we should be able to find one that has a icon. So we just look there for icon. So what I'll do is just look here and we've got item as filter, but we're not going to use item as filter. So, or icon rather. So let's use cart and then get rid of that. Then if we come back, there we go. So that's just an idea of what we're going for. And then inside here is where we would display some more information. So what we can do is inside this menu, what I'm going to do is underneath the divider, we'll have an option to check out there. So here I'll just get rid of that menu and we can get rid of this in there. And in this item, we can look for something that's kind of like a button. So let's just see here. So like this one with the icon, what I'll do is copy that. And then if we just look for icon and let's search for something with an arrow. And so something like arrow right. Then this one here, we'll get rid of this and this will be arrow right. And the text will be checkout. So if we look at this, then like that, check out. And if we get rid of that header item as well, then take another look. Here we have check out there. And these list items here, we can basically call a method to render out some drop down items that represent the order items in the cart. So if we just look at the data again, then here, order items. And each item has an item name and a quantity. So what we would want it to look like is we'd have the quantity. So like this. And then we'd have X and we'd have the name. Let's just see what that was. So item. Okay. Because we're using the string value of that class. So if we say item like this, then here, we can just say cart dot order items dot map each item or order item. And then here we'll just say return a drop down item. And we can get rid of this. And this will be each order item dot quantity order item dot item. And then we will use a key and we'll say that this is order item dot ID like this. Let's see order items of null. So what I'll do here is say cart in front of this and then say and 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 then here we'll say cart and and cart dot order items dot length is smaller than one. Then I'm going to just put one drop down item and the key we can get rid of. And inside there we can say no items in your cart. And after that drop down, otherwise we put null. So we either have it less than one and we show this or we map it out like that. So like this, now we have that item showing there and we have our shopping cart count at least displaying. So our add to cart is working. And then in the next one, we can start focusing on displaying all of the items in our order summary and being able to remove those items.
So basically working on that checkout view. So if you enjoyed this video, then leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.